In today's video, we're going to be extending on the protection magic video that I recently shared, and we're going to be talking about personal shields that you can create to energetically protect yourself in a space and when you're out in the world. So do get yourself a nice hot drink, settle back, relax, and enjoy. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me for today's video. So if you haven't already seen, I recently shared a protection video on my channel and it went into a lot about protection magic in general as well as protecting your home and your space and I touched a little bit upon energetic shields and wards, wards that you can create around your space that are a little more stable and a little more permanent, not permanent, a little longer lasting I should say, that last a little bit longer, however no shield or ward will last and you will have to top it up or have it energetically fueled by some form of battery or power source. That's a topic for another the day but I did include a few examples of how you can attach batteries to protection charms etc or guardians or you know little items that you might have decorative items that you might have around your space in that previous video I talked a lot about home protection I think it's really really key so if you would like to learn more about that first I recommend you know watching that one I don't think you need to particularly watch them in any order so if you're here stay here and then I will recommend the other one for you in the cards and at the end there will be some recommendation videos as well so as I briefly just mentioned personal energetic protection is often referred to as shields and or wards and they're kind of used quite frequently within the community interchangeably however there is a kind of consensus I feel around like shielding being more something that you put up as a temporary form of energetic protection like a cloak or yeah a shield around you however a ward I do see in a similar way to be honest with you but as I said before I would sort of see this as more of a longer lasting charmed ward that will continue to draw power from something else so let's get right into it. So what essentially is shielding? Shielding is creating a energetic and or magical field of protective energy around yourself to protect yourself or you can do it to another person or to another item within a certain space. That may differ for you wherever it is you may want to be or traveling, whatever. And when you are practicing this form of magic, you will also be doing a little bit of this with your home protections. And you will also be incorporating a lot of the techniques that you use in this in things like circle casting and in grounding and centering. And all of these things sort of tie together quite closely. So you are probably familiar with some of the ways in which you can create your own wards even if you've not gone about it in this way before. Why do we need to be protected in the first place? Well in the first video I did talk about why I mean it's kind of blatantly obvious but also when you're out and about your person needs to be protected. Now first of all I hope this goes without saying but this kind of work energetic shielding does not replace any other kind of protection that you have, like a mundane protection. So you may carry a pepper spray or a rape alarm or something along those lines with you if you live and work in a busy city. If you are a cyclist, you may wear some kind of protective uniform while you're cycling, or if you do a job that has physical risk, you may be wearing some kind of fluorescent sort of glow in the dark, what's the word for it? You know what I mean kind of outfit. So it's those kinds of forms of protection that you would take anyway and know your route and if you're walking on your own at night as well it's often advised to walk with someone else that you know or a group of people to stick to the roads that you know and stick to busy roads etc etc etc. So all of those things come into play and should not be ignored. Just that disclaimer that these personal wards and shields don't negate the need for that mundane protection as well. So it's really important that you are aware of that. Another thing that I think is really, really important to mention that a lot of people don't talk about and don't touch on is that if you are going out for an evening, say, and you plan to be drinking alcohol or consuming some form of mind altering substance, I'm not here to judge, whatever, you know, if that's your choice, this is going to impact upon whatever shields you put up 
around your person. So in addition to the energetic shielding, it's really key to have other things and we can talk about what other like physical things you might have like charms, like jewelry, and I made a video about that, that glamour magic, things like that that you can layer. Again, we're talking about layering in our practice. Ways in which you can protect yourself in many levels. So it's a spiritual protection, but also these items are assisting that spiritual protection and they add fuel and power to it. And also these are items that you can charge and further imbue and add more intention into and you can cleanse them as well of any negative energy. So that is another thing. But I do want to just say that it will be impacted when you imbibe alcohol and I've actually experienced this myself in not a pleasant way on a few occasions so I haven't been as safe as I would like to have been because I imbibed alcohol and I knew that was the choice I was making but I would not recommend it so I personally feel now that I would rather not be consuming alcohol if I don't feel safe or like I trust the people who I'm around. Do you know what I mean? I think it's really, really key that you're aware of this, you know, and if you're having like a lovely dinner with your loved ones and you're out with them and you're perfectly safe in that environment, then, you know, go ahead. But just be really mindful of that and that, you know, whatever you imbibe is going to impact on your ability to maintain the shields that you create because also they will disperse, the energy does disperse or to be honest with you, I very rarely have to take my shields down because they've already slipped after spending a lot of time in public places or around certain people who I do not want my energy exposed to. So just on this note, I would like to add that you can definitely just check in with yourself wherever you are and re-shield yourself. You know, put those shields right back up again when you feel that they've slipped. And if you just take a moment to check in, you'll notice, you'll know when that is. So just excuse yourself, go to the ladies room or go to the bathroom or wherever you feel safe and wherever is private, wherever you have just your space where you can stand with yourself and you can ground and center and just allow yourself to rebuild those shields for yourself. I would really highly recommend that, especially if you are in a situation where you don't feel so comfortable. For me, there have been certain times when I have felt that I don't need to do this and there are other times when I feel I do. And if I'm out for an hour and a half on the school run and I have a chat to a few parents and then I get my kids home from school, I don't even really need to take down the shield because just the process of getting back into my car, it sort of naturally just slips away, even if it's not already up until that point. But if I feel at any point that I need to reshield, I will. And whenever I'm out for a length of time, I will just check in and reshield if I need to. And we'll get more into that. But I did just want to mention as another disclaimer that you do need to be aware that imbibing certain substances will impact your ability to maintain those shields. And this may be to a greater or lesser degree for different people, but I think it's important to note. The reason as magical practitioners that we would like to be protected when we go out is manifold. We may be going into situations where we don't know people. We may be going into situations where we'd rather not be with certain people who are going to be there. We may be going into situations where we know that certain people may be envious or jealous or shady or cast some kind of evil eye onto you, whether or not they are aware of that. They may be sending you negative intentions or energy or ill wishes is again with or without the awareness of it a lot of people I think do this without being aware you may also be going into a place that might have some spiritual activity and you want to protect yourself from that as well or you may be very very sensitive to other people's energies very strong empath for instance and you may be just receiving that and you may have to work on that now for me one of the ways in which I practiced a lot throughout my adolescence and teens with this kind of energy work is because I was like a sponge as well as a people pleaser and an empath. And so I was often taking on board other people's stuff and sometimes I still slip into it. So for me, it's so important that I am on top of this and that's why I've spent such a long time honing exactly what I do. And over the years, I've switched up my protocol slightly and I'll get to more of that later.
And there may be myriad other reasons why a practitioner of magic, a sorcerer, a magician, a witch, or a spiritual person may wish to protect themselves and their energy field, right? Also energy vampires, that's another one that you may experience who are, without your consent, drawing energy from you. Again, you just need to be aware. So there are many reasons why we would like to be protected in this way. So I'm gonna talk now about the energetic shielding techniques that you can utilize in your practice before you go out into spaces. And you can get really good at this so that you can do it almost instantly. And it takes less energy as well. I will get into talking about other items that you can utilize later. You will want to be really aware of where it is you're going for starters, what situation it's going to be in, what the kind of risks are, the people around you, how familiar you are with them. And you want to sort of ask ascertain exactly like what levels of protection will work for you and again that is down to you and you can get really creative with the ways in which you do this and the imagery that you bring into this the visualization that you utilize within this and this again kind of goes back to what I said in the previous video so if you haven't seen that do watch that because there is a kind of a key point that no one's going to do it like you do your technique will work the best for you so everyone's techniques are slightly similar of course because we're kind of doing something we're all doing a similar thing but everyone has different ways of doing this it's important to mention as well that before I go into discussing this, this technique involves a lot of other techniques that you're going to need to be familiar with that I will discuss at length in other videos at other times. And I've mentioned a lot before. It's worth mentioning here that you will want to be practiced in techniques of visualization and aware of how that works. You'll want to be aware and familiar with your own energy, okay? So your own power and your own, how your body feels as well as your etheric astral body, your light body, if you will. So you want to have that inner awareness, that which know thyself, which again, I talked about in the previous video. You'll also want to be proficient in being able to sense energies, manipulate energies, move energies, shape energies, that's the manipulation, as well as techniques like grounding and centering. All of these come into this work and it all kind of comes together, but also it's understanding the different aspects of the self and how worlds or different realms come together as well because you have different layers of different realms and that is another thing that we can get into at another time and talking about astral travel and things but in various different cultures there are different ways that this is looked at and in western magic the teachings that i've read the most about are often talking about the lower middle and upper selves essentially and the lower being quite kind of the primordial the root the middle self being the very physical mundane in the present and the upper being like the celestial realms etc and so you'll notice there's a lot of similar teachings around this topic in various different teachings and so again I can talk about that in another video it's kind of another thing in itself that there are these layers and aspects of self as well and it's I think really really key to be in touch with those parts of yourself connected to those parts of yourself because your etheric body it has energy within it already so when you're energy sensing you're going to be practicing techniques where you try to feel the energy you know like I mentioned this last time where you you know you push out like little veins or tendrils or like tentacles some people call them tentacles of your senses then you actually feel the sensation you can feel the sensation right then that becomes like a mental thing and they are all connected it's all holistic it all comes together so with the energy work there's the visualization work and the astral work the physical work the energetic protections and shields they overlap with the other kinds of protection magic you are working on and so whilst this is an item a charm as it has a symbol on it that is the evil eye symbol, for instance. I talk about that in my charming jewelry video. It has a symbol on it, which has universal power. And so in that sense that there's an egregore of that, that's powerful. But 
that's not enough on its own. You know, you need to add your own magic, but that's not all of your own energy. That's energy that you are drawing up to support you with your work and then channeling that energy and pushing it through. And that's more about energy work, as I said, and we can talk about that in another video. So all of these things come together. It's all really, really important to learn and it's all really important to practice. And these are kind of like the foundations of a witch's work. I think it's a statement that's been echoed by quite a lot of people that as a practice witchcraft comes quite close to shamanic practices and I'm not saying it's shamanism. Often people will talk about how some of their practices shamanic in a sense whilst even though they know they're not shamans but it's kind of for a lack of a better word because there isn't really another word that's kind of the equivalent of. I do think that around that word there's a lot of stigma, there's a lot of issues around even expressing that word if you are not part of a specific tribe but there are so many indigenous tribes they will all have had their own techniques and shamanism is one specific technique, I believe Siberian. It was whitewashed and commercialised and there's a fabulous book with an essay about that, The Modern Craft. I did a review of that on my channel last year. It does a really, really good job of critiquing those earlier books from the 90s that would conflate shamanism and witchcraft. I think even in Scott Cunningham's, for the first page of Wicca, I think it is, conflate shamanism and witchcraft together and they aren't the same. <laughs> but we know better now, so we do better, but I think a lot of people still express that word shamanic because it's kind of for lack of a better word. I'm just gonna say that I don't believe my work is shamanic, but my work is on the astral, traversing many planes in the other world, in the spirit world, I do a lot of that work and existing in that space helps to sort of strengthen your sense of your astral body and stuff and I think it's really really key to educate yourself on all of these teachings and the different ways in which these teachings have been interpreted and have developed and taught within different systems. Nothing is a monolith, it's all kind of being synchronised and characterised by a specific nature of something and that's a kind of feel what happens with the terms around shamanism, shamanic. I do traverse across different worlds, work in the spirit world, and I guess many would say hedge cross astral travel. And again, syncretic, but we can talk about that in another video. So I will work to create videos around those different areas, energy work, how to feel energy and to move energy, shape energy at will, and how to utilize it within your work, how you can support it with powering your work, your spell work, and also then how you can benefit from utilizing that energetic work within grounding and centering techniques, and how you can do that to support yourself in a mental way, as well as in a physical way here in the world, and how that can really just support your work as a witch as well. And I think as well that studying these techniques is really a key but one thing that I've noticed about a lot of practitioners that I have met and worked with connected with a lot of this is innately in them like they know how to do this stuff and often it's just the vocabulary for it wasn't there and just then going oh okay like that's a system or that's a technique and I can study that and try it that way but then see how the results different and just practice it in different ways and how the results differ, but you're also taking it step by step. It's like stripping it back. Something you knew how to do innately within you. I'm not saying everyone would. To some people, some of these practices will have come naturally and they'll have been doing some of these things since they were children. And for some, that imagination and visualization ability will slip, but for some others, it will stay and it will get stronger. And the reason why it's really important to learn about these, even if you're already doing it, even if we're already getting fantastic results with your spell work, the reason why it's important is because you strengthen your ability to manifest, to create change in accordance with your will in your environment, in your world, in reality. You will strengthen that by flexing these muscles in different ways. It's like you were born a natural runner. You have the physique for it, you have the stamina for it, the energy, you're really fast, right? And you're just a fantastic, fast runner but you're lacking in other areas of your fitness journey and you've never worked any of those at a certain point you might find yourself 
needing to expand beyond what it is you do. I mean, for instance, I wish I'd have known when I was younger how important strength training is. So you flex your muscles in different ways, build up your skill set, perhaps learn new techniques. Or what for me, what I found is that it breaks down exactly what you're doing and it makes much more sense. And sometimes I don't know what it is about the way my mind works, but it feels very chaotic and cluttered. And I like to have ways in which I can go, Ah, okay, so that makes sense. So that's why I like to learn different techniques. I like to learn different traditions and ways of doing things. It's not saying that I'm going to be practicing something that's a closed practice, but it is saying that, you know, I will be learning what I can and where it's appropriate to be practicing in that way I will practice. But it doesn't mean to say I'll always do that. And it doesn't mean to say that I do it even very often because I have my own ways, and the things that work best for me. But also with that trial and error, you expand your awareness, you expand your knowledge, flex those muscles, improve, and again, as I said, strengthen your ability to manifest in accordance with your will in your world. You just become a strong witch. It helps you to be more aware of yourself. So if you have found that you've just been naturally really good at something, that's amazing, but try some other things too, because you might find something works even better for you. And it's just, it's important to, I think, be learning and improving all the time. And that's kind of my philosophy with everything in life and that nobody has all the answers and that I'm a forever student, absolutely, through and through. So as I mentioned, all of that, I'm not gonna go into the details and specifics of all of those techniques, but what I'm gonna talk about is this energetic shielding. The way in which you do this will depend upon all of those things I discussed before. So where it is you're going, who you're going with, and how you feel about that, and how much protection you feel you need. So what I do like to do quite often, because I know where I go most frequently, and I know what I need in those situations, is I will layer my shields. The way that I would like to do this is I would, first of all, like to do it ideally before I leave the house, but occasionally I've had to do it when I'm out of the house. And as well, you can obviously top it up. You want to be centered and grounded. It's really nice if you can do a meditation first, if you've got time, but if you don't have time, that's fine. You wanna center your energy. You want to basically pull all of your energy into your core or your heart or whatever space feels right, depending on what kind of work I'm doing and how my mood is, it, it differs. And you wanna pull all that in and anything that you feel that's residual, you wanna pull that in. And then you want to shift it, move it through with the energetic movement and manipulation and you want to ground yourself essentially. And I will talk about this in another video, but you can basically ground with your feet, with your hands, with your arms, with your legs, with your whole body, with your forehead, any part of your body basically on the ground. You can also do this by connecting to a wall, for instance, if you can't reach the ground for some reason if you're on a high stool or, but you can do this simply with your visualization techniques. So you want to be centered, you want to ground. I like to ask the earth to transmute any negative energies and I visualize different colors. And usually it's like a red color or a cloudy color and it sometimes comes back as green or it sometimes comes back as gold and it's usually like sparkly and it comes back and it enlivens me and invigorates me. And then I feel that tingly energy. And quite often I do this anyway, even if I'm not going to be shielding, I will do this throughout the day. And you don't need to be outside, you can be, be upstairs, downstairs, wherever. It's just nice to be able to obviously put your feet on the grass, that's lovely, or in the sand, or in the mud, or <laughs> wherever, but it, it's not always possible, I get that. This isn't supposed to be a step-by-step -step instruction guide on how to center and ground, because as I mentioned before, I am going to be creating a separate video for those techniques in depth. This is just a general overview and some of the little things that I like to do within that. And just to mention that using visualization to center and ground is the preliminary preparation that you want to be practicing before you then go on to shielding. So you want to do that work first, and then that energy that comes back up from the earth, Mother Earth, if you don't want to use a word that sounds so gendered, then you don't need to. You can refer to it as Gaia. You can refer to the earth as she, he, they, whatever works for you. You know, some people connect to Gaia or Pachamama. So whatever aligns and resonates for you. I ask the earth to transmute any energies, and if there's something really nasty, I ask 
ask that it be removed and neutralized and sent elsewhere for the highest good and anything else will be transmuted and I will draw that back up into my center and then I would either use my hands or my heart, take it from my heart and visualize it coming out. And so there are multiple ways to do this. So some people like to see a bright light coming from within. Some people like to literally see themselves pushing out a bubble, like a watery bubble. Some people will create like electric fields around them, lightning kind of fields. You may see them as like balls of light, you may see them as bubbles, you may see them as rings. They may be hot, they may be elemental, they may be made of other materials and we will get to that again in a minute essentially you push that out and I would most frequently I have hand motions that I use specifically and then there are other things that I like to do with it so when I push it out I almost see it it's a little bit like Photoshop and the tools that you can use on there I envisage a sphere that you then expand it's like that that you can expand but I do feel it as well so I don't just visualize it I also feel it because Obviously some people do suffer from aphantasia, I think that's what it's called, where they can't visualize things. So a really good way to get around that is to actually feel, to sense what things feel like, the tactile feeling of it, and that's where energy work also comes into it. So you wanna push out however you see it, either coming out from your heart, pushing out from the whole of your body, it can come out from the whole of your body, come out from the top of your head, spread out around you, or you can use your hands and, and move it through your hands and out of your hands. So it depends on how you want to do that, and again, that's sort of down to your energetic way of working. And then what I like to do is to almost see the bubble or sphere of light almost pulsing as it strengthens in energy, widens and becomes larger. So my first shield that I like to do quite a lot at the moment is coming from the heart space. Often I will surround myself with it as a protective bubble of love. Love for myself, which is really important with the work that I'm doing. And I see it often as a green or a teal, sometimes a pink, but depending on the mood that will change. Other times the first shield that I create will come from the sky. So sometimes this is what some people like to do. They like to see like shards of light coming from the heavens. And I really like that because I feel that I actually get the sensation in my head and I can feel it, I can feel it right now. And I've been doing that for years on my own. I did that a lot in my teens. Reiki actually uses quite a similar technique. So that aligns. So sometimes I bring them together. Sometimes I will use Reiki in that way. And other times I will just use that drawing from the heavens. And I have met some practitioners who like to, who who would rather do that than ground their energy. And I suppose that's different people for you. I personally like to ground, I need to ground. I have a, quite a lot of water and fire and air in my chart and the least earth. I did panic a lot when I was a kid and there were a couple of people that said that I flapped and I start to sort of take off. So I need to be grounded. And so that's something that I like to do for myself. But you know, often when I'm doing things like astral projection, any kind of dream work, sometimes I'll use it then. But it really depends on my mood. I have a number of different techniques and protocol, I guess. There's a specific one that I use most regularly, and that's this. So then once you've created this larger kind of pulsing first sphere, then you will push out another sphere or another ball or another bubble or another shield and you can also envisage an actual shield if you wish that surrounds you kind of armor but that's quite heavy so I don't like that so much but some people might really jive with it so for my second then I like to create a mirror ball I will push out a further energy shield and it will usually be a different material. So there are certain ways that I like to do this depending on where I'm going. I very much like to do a mirror ball technique where I see it like a balloon first and I say a particular phrase and I do a particular hand motion that kind of tugs at the sphere, which then transforms it. It's like flipping a mirror. I feel like, you know, when you flip like a car mirror, it's a bit like that, you flip a switch. So I flip that and it suddenly becomes this mirror ball. So obviously the mirror ball is fantastic for reflecting and refracting back. 
sending back anything you don't want. So if you are going to a space where there are some people who are kind of throwing shade at you or gossiping about you or looking at you in a jealous way or a negative way or sending you ill wishes, then that is perfect for that. So I already I have my first shield. Then I, I sometimes like to use some elemental shields as well. And if I feel like I need it, I will literally evoke a fiery wall of protection around me. The way I do that is I breathe it out. It's almost draconic. I visualize my inner fire, my inner flame, and I see that, you know, inner serpent, that coiled serpent kind of rising up. And it's, for me, it's a very sensual coming from my sacral chakra, from my womb space coming up. And it can be likened to, I guess, the Kundalini energy, although it is obviously a different tradition, but that energy, again, pulsating, expanding, and then I will breathe out that breath, that hot breath. And I usually do a few breaths sometimes if I don't feel it's made it all the way around. But what happens is it's like I'm breathing fire and then it ignites and surrounds the entire space and goes up around and creates like a tear shaped flame that exists within itself. It meets itself, it's this massive flame and it, it meets itself on the bottom as well. So all of that, I feel, I can feel it. Obviously it's energetic feeling, right? And I see it as well. So in my mind's eye, I see it. We can talk more about visualization in another video. But so that is something I really love to do and I see that as very fiery protection. Other things that you can do, you may wish to create more or less shields than this. I've heard others talk about blue flames, different coloured flames and different coloured spheres. There are so many ways that you can do this and so again that like, comes back to that creativity and knowing what works for you. Utilising the elemental idea again you could literally move air and create like a kind of vortex of air around you but I think the intention has to be correct as well. Some other ways that you may want to play with it is you might want to fill up the shield so the space in the middle between you and the shield so in all of that space there's like your energy so it's all my heart centered energy i don't really want anything else there but like another layer than my mirror ball but what you could do is you could then create other elements in between the balls and within the balls so you may wish to do things like barbed wire or thorns or brambles any kind of protective herbs plant allies you can envisage and imagine and fill up that space with that i personally wouldn't do this in my initial because i want that completely uncompromised by anything so really what I'm talking about when you're talking about filling it is like more protections and more so if that barrier is crossed then it's not just you know space in between it doesn't just go straight through that shield and then it's up onto the next it might have things to stop it in its tracks to confuse it this is where you come into vocab around tripwires which I've mentioned a couple of times I had some questions about and I would really like to make a video about it because I think that there's many ways that you can do this and it's kind of again like a really creative thing to talk about but a tripwire or a decoy or a trap within that sphere of protection that you've created right that, that can really trap something right so stop it where it is and then you just visualize it kind of just like hang <laughs> and then when it comes to taking those apart or pulling them down if that does get penetrated if something does happen and things are being penetrated in that way you're probably likely to feel it it's going to be really important to not only take those down but to also cleanse and protect but cleansing and protection anyway. Spiritual hygiene always. Alongside the mundane cleansing, please, that was a really important point in the last video. So yeah, filling that layer to create a decoy, a trap, a way in which you can suffocate, snuff the energy out would be really cool. And ways in which you could do this, you could fill an energy with a particular fragrance that is related to you. So I guess you could fill a certain space. Maybe if you have another few bubble type shields, you might wish to fill those. I would not fill the one that's closest to you. For me, in my opinion, this should be all just pure, protective, loving energy in mine. But one of the, the shields that's further out you may wish to fill with a fragrance, for instance, that you wear often. So if you know that scent, again, we get into that visualization, energetic work, psychic work that we talked about being all holistic. Sense that, evoke that, push that into the space, fill that with that, but also then fill it with something that's going to stop it in its tracks. So it gets through, it thinks it's got you, but then it it's stopped in its tracks by something else like 
broken bits of glass you could do. I have also in the past used spikes. When I talked about using an actual shield, you know how in a lot of armour and shields and historical battle wear, should we say, accoutrement, there are things like spikes or spears or so that if someone's coming at you, that kind of thing, you can imagine that. And again, those things stop them in their tracks, but again, it's like degrees. How much do you need? And I think that that's a really great way to kind of gauge what you want to do and also what works for you. Another thing you may wish to do, depending on the situation you're going in, is create transparent shields or shields that not can be broken as such, but shields that are passable throughable <laughs> for certain people or certain people who have certain good wishes or good energy to give to you. And so this might be, for instance, if you are going to a family gathering and there happens to be a lot of lovely people there who you love, but then there's one person who can just be a little bit meh, you may wish to create the intention with a slightly more porous kind of textured shield something like a mesh, like a veil, like lace, as like a layer over your initial kind of bubble, and then set that intention that that will allow your shield to somewhat disperse, not disperse, but just that certain things can pass through it. So if you wanted to have like a little connection with one of your family members who you deeply love and care about and you haven't seen them in a really long time and stuff but you don't want to be all open and completely vulnerable to everybody in that space, you know, that's how you can do that. And again, there are multiple materials and textures, forms that these kinds of shields can create. And again, this is all energetic and visualization work that you are doing. There are certain techniques as well utilised in Reiki that can sort of semi-shield you, I think, but I still like to use my ways. One of them is that you can create a bubble outside of yourself and step into it, or you could create like a door within it and step into it, or a zip, or something like that. I've heard other people say that. And there's another lovely technique utilised in Reiki, and I'm not going to go into depth, but I do think this is a really nice one, and that is when you have been using a lot of psychic energy, or you've been connecting to spirit, or whatever, and then you have to go and like do a school run like me you might want to just quickly kind of push your energy back in and it just to allow yourself to you know come back whole and obviously you're not pushing everything out because it's still your etheric body you're still present you still have an aura right but you know it's just shielding those parts of you and often as well I will do things like place my hand on my heart not only to connect in and to feel where I'm at but it's also protective for me then there are other little things that you can do. So I talked about textures, I talked about different hand motions, words that you can say. I often have a few phrases that I have built up and created for myself and I have little movements, tugging and pulling at things and the blowing. Then you might think about the different textures and qualities, hot, cold, different elements. Other things you can use as well like a cloud or a puff of smoke or an invisibility cloak. Sometimes I've done this over my protections as like a proper, I like to think of like the invisibility cloak from Harry Potter, you know, I literally like will throw it over me. I read Harry Potter when it first came out, you know, I was like 12 or 13 or something and I was doing it then. So that's been a really fun thing. So, but that really, really helps sometimes if you want to sort of disappear for a little bit. So other little things that you can do are of course charms, jewelry so i have a video about charming your jewelry for this kind of work and i will link to that i highly recommend you go watch that particularly it talks about the evil eye etc and the difference between amulets and talismans you may wish to wear certain symbols that have that created egregore around them and then also imbue your energy and the energy that you are utilizing to support and power your spell, push your intention, imbue that into the item and top it up occasionally, also cleanse it as you need to. You may wish to protect your items using the shield that I talked about, you know, if you wish to hide a certain item, obviously you can clothe it in another way, like put it in a drawer, hide it from someone and lock the drawer in the mundane way but you might wish to put a shield over it just in case you know if you've got someone who's not so trustworthy in your house you know you just you do what you gotta do rings and all of those things fantastic for that and they do add so much protection to your person i also love to anoint with oils so i have a protection oil i made in a recent vlog folk witch vlog i made a few oils 
It's a protection I really like because I imbued it with some tripwires again within that. I like to anoint myself with it and made it so that I could anoint myself with it as well as utilize it around my home and within spells. You may also wish to create your own incense. I actually forgot to mention incense blends in the previous video about protection, but of course, I think that goes without saying. You might wanna cleanse, smoke cleanse, but then also create an incense to fill your space with a protective energy. But another thing you might wanna do before you go out is to burn some of that incense and walk through that smoke, not only cleanse yourself, but also then walk through a protective smoke and see that. If you are one of those people that does struggle with visualization and really needs to sort of have other ways, another way that you can do that is by doing something physical like that and having these charms and things physically. You may also wish to, as I said, use the words. I like to use the words in a kind of chanty spell incantation way because I think that's really powerful. But if you really need support with visualization, then speaking aloud what you want to envisage and imagine will support you in doing that and creating that shield for yourself. And another thing that you can also do is to carry crystals, of course, on your person, as we talked about crystals in the previous video, some really protective crystals and crystal jewelry. You may also wish to carry little mojo bags or grigri bags, whatever your tradition allows or suggests, or just herbal charms, any folk charms as well that you can sew into your clothing, your person. I talked about all like sigils, etc., on the other video, but any utilization of sigils, runes, oem on your person in any way will help. Another thing that you can do is glamour magic, and I'm gonna do a video on this as well, but it can be very physical in terms of actually drawing with foundation and with eyeliner on your body, on your person, but it can also be a energetic thing, and I'm gonna talk more about that in another video. You may also wish to have a little poppet or like an effigy of yourself, something that symbolizes you and encase that in something protective. You may wish to keep this somewhere very protective and safe in your home. Work on that, but also then have that with you. Or if you're traveling a far distance, you may wish to carry that, convey that in a really safe way. You might have a box for it and a bed, create like a real nice nest. I know a lot of people work with poppets for self-love. I have in the past, that's really beautiful and so you can create that connection in that sympathetic way you know this is also this so therefore what I do to this will be manifested so if this is protected you know in this like velvety soft cushion and nothing's going to get to it then that's the same for me you know so sympathetic magic is something that you can utilize as well so another thing i would like to add is some books that you can delve into that will kind of support you with this work i think any of the protection books that i mentioned in the previous video will be supportive but there are also some other books that will also be supportive for you. There is a long list of books that I included that talk about these practices and more in the previous Protection Magic video and they're all linked below as well. And there are some other books that will support with this but they have either an emphasis on intuition and psychic work or an emphasis on energy work or an emphasis on kind of visualization and all that sort of thing. So I would like to discuss those books further in other videos. There are many, many books that you can dive into that will support you with this work. So I think I have mentioned everything I wanted to discuss today. It's been a lot, obviously, to take in. There's a lot of information. If you have any questions at all for me or any suggestions, questions, comments, please let me know in the comments below. Like the video, share it with anyone who you think would be interested. Please let me know if there's anything you'd like me to make a video about because that would be awesome. Also, if you'd like to come and support me over on Patreon, I make full and new moon forecasts that include all the energetics and what the planets are doing, the aspects, the ways in which that may impact you depending on your signs, etc. As well as like how to work with certain aspects, be they either more challenging or more benefic of nature, and how you can kind of work around more challenging, let's say, like find little loopholes. I like to do that. Planetary magic in that way. Also, shadow work with prompts, journal prompts that you can go into. There's a lot of work that I include. It's like lots of exercises, lots of practices, and then I include include further practices you might wish to engage in, further spell ideas, ritual ideas, herbs, crystals that you can work with at this time, and then a custom tarot spread for the moment. And that 
is really special for that time but you can also use it after because they usually have a specific theme i put a lot of heart and soul and energy into that and that's available on patreon and that's on the second tier and the first tier is a support level that includes the occasional tarot spread pdf and like ritual or a spell that i've created and shared and i am going to be creating some more content soon i have a few ideas but if you also have any ideas of what you'd like to see on patreon please let me know down below i would really love and appreciate to hear that please leave me a little fire emoji because we've been talking about some fiery stuff i am constrained with time i'm limited for time because i work i have two kids i have a home to take care of life is really busy and uh, keeping up a spiritual practice myself whilst also creating content on instagram and on patreon and here is challenging but i love doing it it is a labor of love so if you would like to support me patreon is there i also have a direct paypal link below as well as a buy me a coffee page and you can also use the super thanks within youtube i'm considering doing memberships but i'm not entirely sure how that works really at this point because i would be wanting to offer similar things that are on patreon but just how that would work i'm not sure so i will look into that if you have any thoughts thoughts or questions or ideas for me regarding content let me know and if you can and you would like to say thank you in any way shape or form by supporting me it is highly appreciated I am so grateful I'm really really grateful to anyone who just watches all the way through as well and so leave that little fire emoji so that I know who y'all are yeah, thank you so much for being here you know I really love it so I am really grateful for those who come back again and continue to grace me with your presence you know so yeah rambled enough click the like button share subscribe hit the notification bell that's how you're going to get notified of when i create and upload videos like this and come join us on patreon there's also a discord server as well which is really fun and i have an instagram page where i share more up-to-date things what i'm getting up to what i'm reading what i'm working on some plant spirit allies and some wisdom, some spells, some rituals I share on there. I do also have a TikTok. It's rather unloved at the moment, although there is some content on there that you might enjoy if you're inclined to work with plant spirits. So anywho, thank you so much for joining me. Stay well and safe, stay cleansed and protected and take really good care of yourselves. And I look forward to seeing you again in another video really soon. So many blessings. Mwah.